I was watching a video of Ingres Sielinch and uh, he tested a circuit that was published on the World Wide Web and it regarded gravitational waves. Anyway, I did some research, he inspired me to do this completely useless experiment. Uh, that's my ID. Uh, there, there are, as far as I could see on the World Wide Web, four detectors or so trying to detect gravitational waves, uh, but their order, and that they are coming from far out of our solar system or other solar systems, when black holes uh, meet, etc., etc., um, there is say, a kind of bubble in space-time. And of course I'm surely not going to detect th this with my setup. That's laughable. Anyway, um, I want to refer to that, that video of Inge Silinch. I will give the link in the text box in the description. And this is only, say, kind of stupid idea to do an experiment regarding that. Um, when you look at the schematics of the, the man uh, to which the circuit of Inge Silinch uh, refers, uh, it was a professor in the 1970s, perhaps 1980s, and he did very early experiments, of course, without all the, say, modern um, things that we know now. Uh, the gravitational wave detectors consist now, as far as I could see, of a um, kilometers long tunnel with mirrors, with lasers, that tunnel must be uh, evacuated, all uh, air must be pumped out, etc, etc. And the most important thing is that um, the gravitational, gravitational waves um, are with a, say, with a space order in the order of 1 to the minus 24s. So, that is extremely tiny, an extremely tiny bubble uh, that they try to measure with all these settings anyway. There's much more info on the World Wide Web, also quite a few YouTube videos about that. And this is a silly experiment. Um, in Gusilinch had another experiment. It was very interesting in my opinion. Uh, and he referred to that professor. And I will give much more information in the description. Anyway, um, when you have followed my channel, this is the start and stop delay for the Weller soldering iron. I published it yesterday or a few days ago. A stop and start. Here start. Then the delay starts, etc. etc. Uh, the indication here is of course related to the to the switch that's built in in that uh, uh, soldering iron. So that not always when you activate here the uh, the time delay, the LED starts to to uh, to flash, to light up. Anyway, that's an other ID. Perhaps when you are interested, this is it was uh, interesting to know. Anyway, let's go back to my ID. Um, the ID of this circuit was that I had a crystal oscillator, a parallel capacitor that's here, and that capacitor gave was was parallel to the crystal, and that meant that I could change the, the frequency of the crystal in a very, very tiny way. My second idea was to make an other uh, crystal oscillator and then 
um, use this crystal oscillator with its varying capacitance thus uh, affecting on say the electrostatic field let it modulate the second crystal oscillator and this is what happened and uh, it is a silly experiment because nothing is built in in a, a good metal case uh, steel box that's what I mean steel box so anyway this circuit suffers from all kinds of external influences electromagnetic influences and also this circuit um, is affected by all kinds of electromagnetic influences so uh, the idea is of course when you want to do serious measurements to get the noise of that the whole circuit as low as possible that's the reason why in these gravitational gravitational sorry waves um, um, professional measurements the the sensors, as far as I could see, correct me if I'm wrong, are, say, a cool down to a very, very low temperature. To, say, get the noise as minimal as possible, etc., etc. So, anyway, um, one crystal oscillator, another crystal oscillator, consider this video as a kind of amusement. It works. That's what I can show. So here, here is, it must work now. So here is, at the moment I don't, I don't see anything. So, but I keep on trying to explain what's happening. Well, here we see again what's happening. One oscillator and this is also new for me so this makes this video extra silly anyway. Um, this is one crystal oscillator. The signal out of one of them so oh, here And this is the sig this is the signal out of this crystal oscillator. That's here. So this is connected here to to this to the to the capacitor that changes the frequency somewhat, and also the amplitude. I see makes it extra silly. Anyway. Um, now, so I measure the signal now here, and that means that this frequency gets, gets, let's look at the frequency, three point five meg uh, megahertz. Also, is nonsense, but anyway, must be approximately must be six megahertz. Let's try and see here. Well, anyway, I leave this video as it is, so that it's clear to see that you can do many experiments. You can. Uh, do all kinds of conclusions and especially my idea is that um, the measurements of the gravitational waves are so extremely precise it's in the order of um, to the 24th of a figure while they are measuring with a measuring instruments that works on the, as far as I could see, correct me if I'm wrong, the 18th of a figure. So it, there must be, is, must be a constant tuning of uh, these, um, say, professional university 
uh, measurements. They must, must constantly be tuning uh, because of all the no flaws, but say the differences that can happen in such a measuring device. Well, again, um, of course, this will not change anything in that respect. Again, I want to refer to the Ingus Sealinch video, of which I will give a link in the description, and especially to the the, the website of that prof of that professor. You can find it in the comments section in the video of Ingus Sealinch. In the comment section, you will find a link to the professor doing all these uh, gravitational experiments in the 1970s. With uh, I, he did that with an op amp, by the way, he connected to an op amp at the input a capacitor, a high value capacitor, and the idea was that when gravitational waves out of the universe enter that capacitor. There will be an effect in the capacitance, and you can uh, see that or make it. But of course, my idea is that um, the difference between the, the plates is so small, and when when you are talking about the signal in the order of one to the twen minus twenty fours, could be more or less sure that it is very, very difficult to detect that. Well, I have a wave here now. The idea was, like I told in the early video, or sorry, in, in the early moments of this video, to modulate here this frequency that's now here uh, via this capacitive effect on of the first oscillator. Well, it will surely work. It will work, I think. I put down the have done put down the camera again and perhaps perhaps it's possible to see something This is a very strange effect. Sometimes we get a kind of bleep or so. Anyway, 602, that is the frequency of this crystal here. And it is modulated here in an amplitude way. Well, it is amplitude modulated, but of course, when we are talking about, say, sporadic effects electromagnetic effects in the order of the one one to the minus 20 20 uh, 24s this of course stays very silly experiment anyway wanted to tell something about it my ideas and perhaps I'm going to work further on it. The whole idea is very, very interesting to pick up as a radio amateur a gravitational wave. Absolutely not sure that that is going to happen.